and Whitney, I'm about to add you in right here. So guys, I'm going to end this broadcast and we are going to um, go over to my cell phone. So here we go, Whitney. Whitney! You should be coming up, accept that invite. So I'm going to end this one, okay? Hey, Whitney! <laughs> hey! Don't you love technology, son? Love it. Love it. Now, I don't know where Brother Malcolm is, but he needs to come on through. So, uh, we're here today to talk about, you want your wife to come in on camera? No, 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 no. <laughs> hey, Sister Kim. Hey, Destiny. Hey, everybody. So, we are here today to talk about the Father Form Conference, where uh, Whitney Hamilton will be one of our millennial and he even now is going to talk, share with us a little bit about the journey he took um, to forgiveness. He'll share a little bit of his story about his dad, and you feel free to share as much as you want, or as little as you want, um, about your dad. And then just what it is you think uh, teens, because you and Malcolm will be speaking to teens, what do you think they need to know about forgiving the dad who might have been absent or maybe he was there, but he just wasn't engaged. He didn't know how to engage. And so I just, you know, want you to share. The Father Forum Conference is on Saturday, April the 7th. And um, Whitney, I'll probably interject and give you some questions to kind of take you in. Okay. Go ahead. It's on you. So, uh... I am, I'm, I'm 29 years old and, and my dad was, he was in and out of my life uh, like a light switch. Oh, wow. Um, you know, there's, there's many, there's some memories and many pictures of when I was younger. And, and, and let me, let me say this. Uh, my father is not a bad guy, was not a bad guy. He just had an illness that took him away from his family. And yeah. a lot of times I think that we end up putting the blame on our fathers. Um, and sometimes, sometimes they really can't help themselves. Um, but so in and out of my life and, and, you know, as a child, uh, he was always just daddy. Um, you know, I, I really didn't understand the whole dynamics. Um, as I got older and was in school, that's kind of when the questions became because I would see other families uh, you know, their dads would always be at the football games, at the track meets, um, at the parent-teacher conferences. And so yeah. my father my father wasn't. And that's when the questions start to become. And one thing my mother always did was she never sugarcoated uh, the truth. She told me the truth according to my age, but she never sugarcoated the truth. And so um, it actually helped me better understand. And so there were moments where, uh, you know, he'd be gone for – uh, two to three years at a time, and I honestly thought that uh, he was dead and didn't know if I'd see him again. Wow, wow. And, uh, my father was addicted to to drugs and alcohol, and, um, you know, besides relationship, things, items, uh, tangible items were stolen, uh, you know, a, a, lot of, a lot of things that comes with that lifestyle happen, and, but for some reason... Uh, I never did stop loving my father. All right and now, Amen. One thing that my that that my mom always taught me was to never have a heart and heart. And at a young age, I didn't understand what that meant because I thought your heart was like a squishy thing, you know. <laughs> and, and so I didn't know what she meant when she said, "Don't have a heart and heart." And so uh, as I got older and really started to understand, and and I could there were certain individuals in my life who uh, had a, a hardened heart and never did let go. And that's what you find out forgiveness really is. Forgiveness is just being able to let go and let God. And there's yeah. many things 
um, that happened in my life with my father where I had many questions, uh, many frustrations, many disappointments, but I found out that if I dwell on that, it's, it doesn't make him magically appear. That's good. Um, and, and so since I couldn't control it, I had to give it to the one that could control it. Now, am I saying that that was easy? Of course not. Um, especially being in school and then there being constant reminders um, uh, of, of being a fatherless child. Let um, me ask you a question. Yeah. Um, do you think there's a difference between a father and a dad? You hit the nail on the head. That is something I've always said. So uh, everybody in the entire world, even if you are a test tube baby. Come on now. <laughs> everybody has a father and a mother because your birth certificate says so. Look at okay? you. Go ahead. On. But everybody doesn't have a dad or a daddy. That is something that you earn. That is a right. That is that is that's that comes along with respect. That comes along with time. That comes along with being there. Yeah. And so relationship um, is what I'm hearing you say. Exactly what it is, um, because honestly, I had uh, I had men from church in my life that taught me different things according to the stage that I was in life. That you know, I had no problem calling them dad, and it wasn't because they were my birth father. It wasn't because they had uh, legally adopted me. Uh, it wasn't because they were dating my mom. None of that was happening. It was because of the relationship and the dad-like things that they were showing me. So there were different men that showed me how to have a good work ethic, um, men that taught me how to dress, men that taught me yeah. how to always keep my hair cut, how to smell good, things of that nature. How to wear a wool coat, at, uh, a cashmere coat at 15. <laughs> See, that, that, that's, that was, that's a man-man special now. That's a man-man. I can't find that code. I don't know what I did with it. Okay, we're adding in Malcolm. But go okay. ahead, keep sharing. Um, and, and so I just, you know, I, I realized that I just had to let some things go. Um, and one thing that my, uh, I have an older brother. And, and when I would talk to him sometimes, I, I never forget my brother said, he said, you know what? He said, dad is still dad. And you have to honor and respect him. And that was one of the biggest things that blew my mind. Because how do you respect somebody that's never there? How do you respect somebody uh, that has disappointed you? How do you respect somebody that, uh, you know, has left you hanging? And it, it, it was a struggle for me to deal with uh, still respecting him because he's dad. Um but but I think there's there's a there's you still have to respect one. The, the biggest reason is because the Bible says honor your father and mother so your days will be mm -hmm. long. Yeah. And yeah. as a kid, as a kid, I literally took that I, I took that literal. So I always thought. Now of course I did some crazy stuff, but I always thought that if I didn't respect my mom and dad, that I was gonna die real soon. Real soon. Real, real soon. So um, that's something I I, I kept in mind. Um, I have a okay. So, a question. Yeah. In the transition with, because you're a junior, you're you're. Are you the second or the third? Uh, junior. Okay. So with Whitney Senior, uh, I do want at because uh, I'm gonna bring Ma um Malcolm Taylor on at about six o'clock because it doesn't allow me to bring two people on. I guess at the same time, or for okay. some reason it's not letting me bring him in. But um, hmm. Okay. So. Um, in that, did you, were there, because what we look at, the, the Father Form Men's Conference was birthed out of the Father Form, the Father Loss Form, L-O-S-S. -S. And the, the Father Loss Form addressed not only absent fathers, but we also looked at fathers who were present, but they were still absent. And the analogy that, or the acronym God gave me was PI that often our children do not experience the full pie experience with their fathers, meaning their father is present, but he's not involved and he's not engaged. So P-I-E, present, but not involved and not engaged. And so hmm. there is a loss that the father experiences as well as the child. And so with that, there are six areas that are impacted often when a father is certainly absent and even when he's not engaged. 
One is financial, emotional, mental, um, spiritual. Uh, what is the fifth one? Psychologically, relationally. So you have these areas of your life. So if we looked at financially, um, emotionally, spiritually, uh, psychologically, meaning how you think about yourself, socially, relationally, how to have relationships with other men, healthy relationships with women. I know you're married with four or five children. Uh, four. Four with one on the way, right? Yes. Look at you. And you're 29. <laughs> you better get it, man, man. I, I love man, man. We're trying to add no extra kids early. Yeah, we got to tell them why I call you man, man. <laughs> Go ahead. Man Man was 15. Weren't you 15 or 14? Uh, 14. Man Man was 14, y'all. He showed up at church with a three-quarter length cashmere coat. I said, that's a Man Man right there. And he's been Man Man ever since. So, but when you look at those, um, those areas, how do you, how would you say your life was impacted either in any of those five or six areas? Um, I, I laugh because at the beginning of, of, of our marriage, um, I wanted to do every single thing with, with our kids. Okay. I mean, everything. Um, and, and, and that's because my dad wasn't, wasn't there for me. So, but my wife explained to me, she said, honey, you, you kind of being excessive, you know, it, it, she said, <laughs> it's, it's okay it's if we have to go, you know, if, if we have to go to, uh, I go to, to my daughter's event and she goes to my son's event. It doesn't mean that you are not uh, supporting your child, you know, but I had this thought that if I'm not there physically and they don't see my face, mm. then all, all hope is lost and I'm a horrible father, you know? Wow. Um, I think one thing, and, and you know, sometimes I think when we, when we hear the word, how did it affect you? We always think of a negative way, but yeah. when you say financially, um, because of the struggles that I have seen my mom go through, uh, my family likes to say that um, I'm, I'm extremely tight when it comes to money. And I don't think it, I'm tight. I let's think tell I'm everybody smart. what you do real quick. Who is, who is, uh, and we'll come back to your story. What, who are okay. you? What do you do? Uh, I am a manager at Lake City Bank. Look at that. Mm hmm. <laughs> you better get it, man, man. I love man, man. So he's a manager at Lake City Bank. You came in, You did you come in as a manager? Uh, no, I came in as a customer service rep and mm -hmm. in about a, about a year or so, uh, went into about a year and a half, I went into management. Look at that. That takes discipline and, str and, and, and you tell us what it takes. What does it take for a young uh, man to do that? It, it, it takes a desire. Mm -hmm. It takes discipline. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it takes work. It takes sacrifice. Um, and, and, it, and it takes understanding, I think. Yeah. I think your I'm wife thinking. said with your children, she posted, you never wanted to let them down. So that's why you were there at everything. Yep. Never wanted to let them down. I didn't, I didn't want them to feel the same, uh, pain that I went through. Yeah. At you and so um this forgiving why is it important to forgive uh y y one thing is it's 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 better for your health ah, <laughs> to be honest okay. better for your health it brings you happiness um I i've heard a couple of sayings you know people say uh that you should forgive and forget ah talk but, about it but but if you look at uh, I think it's in Second Samuel, twelve. Um, God, God forgave King David, but He recorded it in the Bible so that we wouldn't forget. Come on, and He said so, He will cast our sins as far as the east is from the west. He's the only. Back. Can you hear me? Now, I don't know what happened. Okay. And he will remember them no more. We're not supposed to re remember them. There is, you, you don't have to live in them. 
but you need to know that right. they're there so you don't go back to them right. in weak and miserable ways. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and then I also have to realize is that we're we're not all perfect. Yes. Yes. Um. And and so how 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 can we decide that we want to be closer to God? And God decided that he was going to die on the cross for all of our sins. And we can't even forgive our brother. We can't forgive our father. We can't, we can't forgive somebody. Yes. Cause our heavenly and father that, forgives us time and right. time again. All that takes from us is just, um, a conscious mind, understanding what is going on, uh, being realistic with the situation and open up our mouth and say, listen, I forgive you. And then you let go and let God. God didn't say, if you want to forgive somebody, you got to go on the cross. You got to get beat up. <laughs> right. He did you know, but then, Right. But then we turn around and say, well, I'm striving every day to be like God. No, you're not because you ain't forgave nobody. Look at that. Look at that. So as you and Malcolm will talk to these teens, uh, because the conference is open to teens, millennials, and mature men, my goal is to, and I do want you to go back to how were you impacted because you were talking about financially. Your mom just came on. Um, how hey, those things, the And happy birthday, Cynthia. Um, how those things affected you. Often we have youth conferences, teen conference in a long, long time, or we here in India, I'm sure people are having them. Definitely Light of the World is doing the show enough. And then we have the, we don't, you know, men's conferences, at least churches will bring uh, men together in their own ministries. But I think it's important to put all in the same space so that teens can hear from millennials, can hear from adult men. There's, we've lost something, particularly in our community, where we, we learn from our quote unquote elders. And so I think it's important. So as you and Malcolm talk to these teens on forgiveness, you were about to say how it affected you um, in what ways it affected you when your dad was present, absent, but present, but absent. Uh, f financially, you know, my family says that, that I'm tight, but I just think that I'm smart with money. But I think a lot of that stems from uh, seeing, seeing and experiencing the struggle yeah. um, at growing up. And there's there's a lot of goals, there's a lot of visions, there's a lot of things that I'm striving af after. I never like saying that I'm chasing after something, because if you think about it, when you chase after something, you never get it because you're chasing it. Okay. So I'm, I'm striving um, after different goals. And so with those goals in place, there's, there's financial things that have to happen. And, and over the past few years, um, you know, my wife and I, we, we've, set, we've set goals. And we've seen that happen. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, I don't. I don't think that I was one that was. Well, I guess we can say psychologically because I dealt with a lot of anger for a while. Okay, um, I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, I dealt with a lot of anger to the point where I would have uh, dreams and and visions of anger, and I would wake up angry. Um, uh, I I wasn't one to lash out and start you know knocking people out or anything like that. Okay. Um, but but I was just I was just angry and and even in having my son, uh, you know, six years ago, in the beginning when I would tell him to do something, it was it was in an angry manner. Okay. And I honestly didn't know that I was doing it until I was addressed and say, "Listen, you need to you need to calm down. It's not that serious. That boy is only two months. You know." <laughs> you said two months. Yeah. yeah you you expecting him to moonwalk and he can't even look at you straight. He's he barely crawling. Right. So, um, you know, that was just a work in progress. The, one of the major things is people have to realize is that forgiveness is a work in progress. It's not something necessarily that that will always happen overnight. Now, I'm not it saying is, God may I, may I interject right here, because I think that's yes, important, Whitney, because forgiveness is a process. It's you, mm -hmm. you set your heart to forgive and then you walk it out. That's why, how many times must I forgive? 70 times seven. You know, yeah. that's an ambiguous number. Who's going to count 490? So, and then is that 490 per person or 490 in my life, right? So <laughs> right. It's, it's a, it's, it really is setting your heart to forgive. And as you go, you will, you will look up and be like, uh, I, um, uh, I forgave them. I don't, yeah. I don't. 
And one of the ways I think is an indication of the forgiveness of anyone, but for particularly with your with a father, is that you no longer bring that person to account for what they did. You're no longer yep. saying, well, when you did this and when you did that, and when you, I remember, yep. you know, you, you live from that moment on. And I yep. think that's important because a lot of times the longer a father stays away, guilt is, is something. See, because yes. women talk stuff out. We get all of that out. Yep. But men suppress all that so that guilt yep. becomes very weighty on them. And the longer yep. they stay away, the more difficult it is for them to come back and try to rebuild or reconcile or start that relationship and if that teen or that adult because malcolm's going to talk about being an adult when his father came back into his life you know yeah. how do you just let that go and say yeah. okay from this point for i'm going to address what you did because we need to talk yeah. about it we're not going to sweep it under the rug so how right. did that look for you um when you finally um, talk to your dad yeah so you know, the past uh, almost four years has been the best years uh, of of my my father and I's relationship. Um, and, and and let me just go back a little bit and touch on something you said. You know, especially for 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 males, forgiveness was not just for me, but it was also for my father because mm -hmm. as because he knew that I didn't, I was upset with him. He just held that, and since he held that, the devil was able to take that turn it, twist it, and make it a lot bigger than what it was, which caused him to stay in a place which was not at home. And yeah. so as, as soon as I was able to let go myself and reach out to him, then he was able to let go, and then we worked on this thing together. That's good. Um, but how, how it looked like for us is, you know, dad came home and, and, and got, a part of the, got, a, got a part of this program, and uh, I just never stopped loving him. I, I, never, I never did give up on him. Um, even in being upset, even in being angry, I never gave up on them. And so I, you know, I reach out and we talk because I wanted the relationship. Um, it, it, it's different if you don't want the relationship. I still right. wanted my daddy, you know, I'm 29 years old and I, I still call him daddy because I didn't get to do it a lot when I was little. Come on. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and, and so now if you go all the way back to the beginning of, of this live, you ask about the difference between a father and, and a dad. There was a moment where even in my phone, my father's name was just father. Wow. Wow. But but, but see, now now it's dad. Um, and, and, and so it was just a point of us talking it out. You know, those conversations were not easy. Um, you know, but he was at a place because I had forgave him and he had done some work on himself. He was at a place to where he was able to uh, to handle those hard questions I had. Yeah, you know, yeah. why did this happen? Where were you? Um, you know, w was was I not was I not good enough? Was it something I did? Could I have done something better? And so, you know, in the past almost four years, Dad has told me some stories. I thought I kind of knew everything, but uh -huh. he's told me some stuff that he had held um, that that has kind of blown my mind. And in him telling that, lets me know that he is on that, that journey to complete freedom, you know, because awesome. again, this is just a work in progress. Yeah. And when, when you can't forgive somebody, uh, I think it also affects your trust. When you can't forgive somebody, you hold a lot of stuff in. And then, you know. and then also in that addiction, you end up blaming everybody else. So a lot of things that he was going through, I found out sometimes he was blaming me, you know? And so we just had, we had to work it out without using our hands. Look at <laughs> that. And understanding that I'm your father and, and, and you my son. And, and if we want this relationship, we're going to work this thing out. So what, now um, you see him, you see me, and then you see my little man, you know? Yeah, yeah. So uh, was that an easy course of build? Because, well, I think one of the things is um, you, you never um, fell out of relationship with him. You... Uh, fellowship, maybe, but not relationship. Uh -huh. um, and um, with that, it may maybe for you, I don't know, was it um, the transition to let it go and say, hey, let's move forward. You're now a grandfather. It's more than just being a father. Was that um, a little easier? Because I really want to talk about breaking the generational pattern. And, and it, yeah. it, 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 were you intentional about doing that? 
I, I think honestly, initially it was, uh, I wanted him to be there for my grandkids because, uh, I mean, not my grandkids, Jesus. I wanted him to be there yeah. for Could my be. kids. Could be. <laughs> right. I wanted him to be there for my kids because I didn't want them to experience what daddy did or, or, or you know, what I had to go through. And then, um, I, then I just kind of realized and at the same time got tired of myself that I want this same relationship too. So how, how can I, uh, you know, how can I want him to have a relationship with my kids? And at that young age, which means he's going to have to come over, which means I'm going to have to see him. Right. So if I'm right. going to have to see him all the time, then I, I might as well get my life together and say, look, man, we need to sit down and hash this thing out, you know? Um, yeah. And so was I was I intentional? Yeah, but it didn't have anything to do with me at first. It just had to do with my kids. Okay, okay. So, um question. And I and, and you you know, I'm not sure if you feel the liberty to share this. Your yeah. dad's um we know he had a, a um you called it a sickness, a struggle, and we know that addiction is that. Was there anything in his generational or his background that um may have impacted his inability to stay connected as a father was there a generational yes. thing that that to this day has never known exactly who his father is for 100 okay. percent sure okay um and he was also raised by his grandparents and so um i, I think the addiction honestly happened at the age of three um when his uncle's which his family, you know, were supposed to be protecting him, um, put alcohol in his bottle and thought it was funny as he as he drank it. Wow. And so yeah, you know, yeah. The yeah. the devil shrewd and, and decided because, you know, the devil the devil knew and knows how great and the potential that my father has. Yeah. And he, he is, he's a beast. He's a he's an anointed man. With his and so he tried to get him at a yeah, he tried to get him at a young age. And so, um, you know, I think because of that and then, um, you know, his grandparents who raised him, they passed when he was younger and mm. they just kind of began to just continue to turn and turn and turn. And um, and so this kind of passed down. Now, I have a I have a brother that's older than me. Um, okay. We have the same dad. Oh, that's why I said that earlier. Same dad, different mom. Um, and I think, too, just. That's that's even still a process within his within itself, just the forgiveness uh, that my brother would give to my father, you know, um, mm -hmm. just because I decided to doesn't mean that my brother had to either. That's good. That's good. Um, and so, you know, that's this that's something else that we we are trying to work through. You know, forgiveness is just a it's it's a family affair if you allow it to be. Yeah, yeah. I I really um I'm tr I'm I'm listening to everything you're saying and for some reason this is not letting Malcolm in. It's crazy. <laughs> but um so yeah, this is good. What would be your parting words to um another teen who may be struggling with this whole forgiveness thing. And certainly uh, before we close, inviting them to, you know, be a part of uh, the conference on Saturday, April the 7th. Mothers, grandmothers, get your teen boys there. It's only $10. Go for it, Matt, uh, Whitney. Uh, you know, to the teens that are watching this that plan on coming or they don't know that they are, if they want to come or not. One thing about me is that I don't tell anybody anything that I've never been through because I, I don't believe, I just don't believe in that. You, you can't tell, ask somebody to mop the floor and you, you don't even know how to mop yourself. Right. And so I still good. have to say, um, I, I plan to be raw and real and, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's going to be no, no bars, any questions that need to be asked, ask them because the only way that I believe that you can get free is by being truthful and laying it out all on the table. Um, there's a lot of of college experiences that I had that I think had a lot to do with um, my father not being there. And, and that's something that I'm going to touch on at the forum as well. And and so uh, with me, there's going to be a lot of a lot of things that you're going to be able to relate to, um, which I'm excited about. And, and, you know, I guess one thing that I will leave you with is 
you, you hear it and you, you read it in the Bible, but it says, don't let the sun go down mm. while you're still angry. And that's yeah. just not for fathers, but that's also in your, in your marriage and your friendship. Um, and, and even when you ask for forgiveness, it doesn't mean that you are accepting uh, the problem, accepting right. the issue. That's right. That's it just means good. that you're acknowledging it and that you are willing to work on it and that you're trying to do better. Um, so, what so, would you so say come to up. mothers? What would you say to mothers raising young men? <laughs> and and as it relates to getting them to the conference, um, y your sons need this more than what you know. Reason being, uh, we don't like to talk about stuff. That's good. And um, you know, a lot of times. You know, you've been praying, you've been fasting. Listen, you can fast until you're about as big as a as a toothpick. <laughs> but what I'm telling already. you is, <laughs> what I'm telling you is, we're not going to talk to you about it because right. one, as the mother, you have a biased opinion because you already feel some type of way about it. And so when you when you put us in a in a group together, you know, number one, uh, you got Marvin Sapp coming, so we're gonna have a time of worship. And anytime you put uh, a room full of men together and we worship is, is one of the most powerful things. I'm telling you. Ooh, you better come on, don't give me the shot. One of the most man, powerful man. things. Um, but, um, you know, your, your sons need this. They need to hear the truth. They need to see that, okay, I've had some struggles. I've had some pains. I've had some disappointments, but I'm going to be okay. And they need to figure out how can they be okay. They need to understand that just because this happened doesn't mean their hopes, their dreams, their visions needs to fail. Um, you know, sometimes things might be delayed, but it doesn't mean it needs to be stopped. And so your son that, you know, you got him in different classes uh, because he is acting this way and you think you, you know, you want to call it lashing out and all that stuff. He just hurt on the inside and he don't mm -hmm. want to tell you because yeah. you mama. And so he just needs to come talk to some men and and figure out how to get unhurt and then let the process happen. Don't don't think that when he comes back that it's just going to all be better and we didn't wave the magic wand. That's Understand good. that it's going to be it's going to be a process. Let that process happen and be there because there's going to be a moment when he's going to break down and he's going to need that mother's shoulder. He's going he needs to go into that mother's bosom and cry. And when That's he does good. Just hold him tight and let him know you're there. And, and and when when you do that, he'll begin to tell you what he needs according to when he's ready to tell you. Don't force it. That, that is so good. That is so good. I love Man Man. I am so, Brother Whitney, I am so excited that you are going to be a part. And we got, we're going to continue when Whitney gets off. We're going to try to get um, Malcolm on here. But before um, we transition, um, you know, thank y'all give some thumbs up to what you heard um, Whitney say and some hearts. Let him know it was good. Um, yes, yes. Keep going. Thank you. Somebody do know. Do that thing. Yes, yes. Keep going. It was. Ain't nobody gave no hearts. There they go. We got a few. Here comes some hearts. Here comes some hearts. Yes. He ministered the word, y'all. So we are so thankful for you and uh, being a part on April the 7th, Saturday. Uh, I will make sure the link is here uh, for people to register. Ladies who are listening, if you have sons, you have nephews, you have a husband, you have a boo, a boyfriend, tell them to come. Uh, right now, it's $35 for men and $10 for teens. That includes a continental breakfast. Uh, David Hampton, Dr. David Hampton, Pastor Hampton will be the opening speaker. Um, also, we will have... Um, Workshops. We have a workshop on how to lose a million in a year. Uh, a brother's going to share that. Uh, and in that process, um, lost his marriage uh, as well, but always kept a relationship with his children. Uh, we have a workshop on uh, from the street corner to the corner office, kind of a spinoff on Jay-Z's book. Uh, we'll be doing that. Uh, Life After Incarceration is PTSD just for men. Uh, we have a marriage workshop. We have a workshop on men who pray. Uh, we have uh, several just also a workshop on um, manhood for millennials that Ty Pastor Tyler Hill and Pastor are teaching at that conference. So uh, at those full lunch, 
And then ladies, you are welcome at 2 p.m. 2 p.m. for something called the Reconciliation Restoration uh, Ceremony. That's going to be good. Yeah, that's I'm excited about just totally having uh, a full encompassing healing moment. Men, you're going to be just full worship. No, no estrogen in the sanctuary, okay? <laughs> just y'all. It's just y'all. I'm not even in there. Uh, I, my video, my my welcoming the men is through a video, so we I won't even be entering in there until we do uh, the restoration uh, uh, ceremony, and then we will conclude with a fire tunnel. So it is a evening, a day just set aside for our men. So be sure. I got a your question. Your dad just logged on. He said you get, did a good job, son. Are 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 y'all gonna have a fire extinguisher for the fire tunnel? <laughs> Let me not start. I need you to start, man, man. You all right with me. Your dad, did you hear what I said? Your dad logged on. Hey, daddy. I love you, son. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you. Thank you, Whitney. And stay, guys. I want you to hear Malcolm's story. Tyler is cracking up at you. Um, so I want you guys to stay on. <laughs> and <laughs> Fire sub. What do you say, fire subs? You silly, Tyler. <laughs> You said um, it's going to be catered by fire subs? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Full or lunch, fire tunnels. Yeah, y'all not getting no box lunch. We got for real lunch for the brothers. So um, okay. we will see you, and um, we'll be back in touch. Send me your headshot so I can get the uh, flyer done for all the facilitators. Hey, can you take a screenshot right here? <laughs> now Sorry. my glasses off. All right, I will. All right, son. I love you with the love of the Lord. You know you're my man, man. Love you, too. Thank All you. Right. Stay, stay on, guys. I'm going to get Malcolm on. Bye. Bye-bye. All right, Malcolm. Let's see. Let's get you on here. All right. Bring Malcolm on camera. There you go, Malcolm. Come on, baby. Woo-hoo. Ah, hey, Tank. Hey, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Can't complain. Enjoying this day off. You know. Are you off relaxing. today? Yes, I am. Well, you are live on Facebook, so don't say nothing you don't want the world to hear. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> I will so, keep it. Uh, Malcolm, uh, did you get to hear Whitney's story? Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. Okay, I was great. Listening. So, that, uh, Malcolm and Whitney will be together sharing their story at the Father Forum Men's Conference on April the 7th. And so if you would just have our listening audience tell a little bit about your background, who you are, what you do, and just, you know, your your father's story. Uh, well, my name is Malcolm Taylor. Uh, I'm 26 years old, currently working at Best Buy, uh, looking to get back into the teaching field. I was teaching for a little while, but just had to find that right fit. But that's that's what I do right now. Currently engaged to my fiance, Kara Real. Um yeah. got engaged last year in November. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. So just starting the beginnings of a family, you know, doing the man thing, so to speak. Got my yes, house yes. out there, living in Michigan. Uh yeah, that's that's a little bit about me. My How old are you? Oh, twenty six. 26 yes. and no children right now until you're married right yes not till married yes. a little bit later. Uh, tank <laughs> is actually my nephew guys this is my nephew my what are you fourth or fifth nephew fourth. Niece? So, yeah four <laughs> there are four before you yeah yeah so um i malcolm so let's just talk a little bit about um you uh, knowing how you came in contact with your dad. Let's talk a little bit about that. Well, how I came in contact with my father, uh, Ricky Allen Taylor. I came back from hanging out at a friend's house. Mm -hmm. uh, just was during the summer, went to his family's lake house, hung out for a couple of days, come back. And how he came into my life was my mother sitting me down after hearing how my weekend went and letting me know that my father stopped by and was wondering where I was. So just like, and how old were you then? Oopsie, I was sorry, 21. Guys. <laughs> oh, 
How old were you? I was 21 at that point. You were 21. Had you ever met him before then? Never, not once. Uh, up until I think three years prior or two years prior, he was incarcerated. So, okay. yeah, no meeting of him. Ne never knew anything more than a picture off of the website from the prison that he was at. That's it. Wow. Wow. So, um, but you always knew who he was. You always knew his name. Yes, I always knew his name. Always, like I said, knew, knew what he, I, I, I knew his name. Probably it registered in my mind at like the age of 10. I actually saw what he looked like and could put the name to the face when I was 13 because that's what my mom told me about okay. where he was. Prior okay. to that, I always had my suspicions as a child, but I never really pressed for anything because I was content being raised by mom, grandma, the main two, and then uh, the help from the family as well. Yeah. Yeah. And so I didn't know that, that your mom waited until you were 13 to tell you he was actually in prison. I didn't know that. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was around okay. that time. She told me, I think there were just things going on. Me and my mom have a close relationship. I always have yeah. very c communicational and non-communicational. We know what's going on with the other one. It's, yes. Yeah. So uh, she was just aware that things were different, you know, puberty. You know, becoming a man, so to speak, and she just decided to tell me one night. Uh, I think I was really restless. She came, just came to the room, sat down, asked me a couple of questions, kind of felt out the situation. Mm -hmm. Told me, well, he's in prison. He's been in there since you were three. And I was like, whoa, 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 wait, what? But, but before then, you had met him even before he went to prison, right? Mm, before then, all I had met was a few aunts and my grandmother on the Taylor side. Okay. Through encounters at the store. That's about it. Through the encounters at the store, at, at a grocery store, but not, you didn't have a relationship with your dad's side of the family. At whatsoever. They knew where we were. They knew where I was. At that point, being a child, that really wasn't my place to reach out and make that connection. That's kind of, that's on them at that point. My mother was never rude. I remember when, you know, we would run into each other. Yep, this is where we live. That's where we stay. Come over if you want. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, past that, two years later, getting eggs. Three years okay. later, getting milk. <laughs> right. Yeah. You they that, but for whatever reason, they never felt comfortable to reach out to you and build that relationship, even in the absence wow. of their father or brother. I mean, their son or brother. Son, so brother, yeah. what, you know, one of the things I, I talked to Whitney about was we, when this started, you came to one of the forums several yes. years ago. And if you would just share with our listeners who may be thinking about bringing their son, you actually experienced a forum. Um, what was that like for you? For me, it was refreshing to see that I'm not the only person with this story the only person with this experience, you know, to know, I mean, I know that there's others, but how often do people actually get together to talk about it? Okay. However much or how little they may want to. We all know that it goes on. We know that it's an epidemic. We know that it hurts a lot of men, families, women. It hurts everyone out there. But people normally don't have the courage to come forward and share those stories, to let everyone else know, hey, I've been through this too. I overcame this. I'm still here. Mm -hmm. I made Yeah, yeah, yeah. And <clears throat> so Whitney talked about he went through anger issues. What are some of the things as we look at, you know, how it affected you not knowing your dad? I mean, you knew of him, but Whitney knew his dad. He had a relationship with him to some degree, but you knew of him, but you didn't know him. And you are just meeting him at 21 and we'll get to, you know, where you guys have been now trying to build a relationship. But what was that like coming up? I mean, did you have anger issues or? Oh, yeah. Uh, actually, at the age of 16, I started seeing a psychologist because the latent resentment. And this is the, these people I've seen before. They're my family. They live closer than my other family who I see on a more regular basis. How does that work out? My, what, 
why is it that they always say they're going to do something and they never follow through? What? I mean, I'm I'm happy where I'm at. I'm content with the family I have. I'm more than content. But why do these people keep lying to me and letting me down? Okay. So that towards them, the absence towards him, even though all I knew were the stories. And once we talk later, they held merit. They were true. But he owned up to them. Like I said, that's, okay. that's, that's for them. But all of that lack of information and just the blatant disregard it turned into, I, I would say, a pretty intense hatred. I had to go see someone because I was to the point where I was breaking things, kind of looking for ways to outlet that because I didn't really know how to outlet that. I could talk mm -hmm. to my mom about it because, like I said, we've always been close. We could always talk about anything. could talk to grandma as well. You know, the, the two who were right there, and my Uncle Pat, my father's yeah. figure. You know, you as well. <laughs> you, the the very vocal people in my life, I could talk to you guys. I could share bits and pieces, but it never actually was able to express how I truly felt. Yeah. yeah. So with that so you, being the case, it just and built that's up. that's good. That's good. I think a lot of times, particularly in the Black community, if adults avoid going to see a therapist, we, we don't think about our kids need somebody to talk to. You're their mom or grandma, uncle, aunties. That's cool. But there's a place that we can't get to to help you so did were you able to overcome your anger i was able to overcome my anger but i went there when i said like i was about 16 the anger really didn't subside until i was about 20. oh I wow said, okay well, yeah it okay it, it held on for quite some time i okay. just i couldn't let it go because once i figured that okay either he's out now and he hasn't tried to get a hold of me which it took him the time to build the courage to be yeah. able to do that. yeah but to know that you're here, you're out now, I haven't heard from you, I've seen my family, and we even gave the invitations to the graduation party that at the very That's least, right. like, you, yeah. you, you couldn't even show them to the graduation party, if nothing more, if nothing more. So all of that hurt just o over time, thinking yeah. about, you know, like, mm, you know what? Do I do I call you fat? You're not family. You're strangers who I have to put on. I don't have to put on anything. Because you have, have a bloodline with them, but you didn't have a relationship with them, and you certainly didn't have any fellowship with them. Exactly. So how did you begin your process of healing to to forgive? My he my the starts my healing process. I would say would have been when. I went to the psychologist and started talking things through more. Me and my mom got very close around that time, just communicating things, like letting her know where I was coming from, why I was feeling this anger. Uh, we would go around, uh, went to a few churches, didn't really find anything that felt right, felt fulfilling. Mm -hmm. But I mean, my own personal relationship with God, praying on my own, meditating, and just staying in communication is kind of what got the got the ball rolling. Okay. If, if it wasn't for that open channel of communication, then I don't know where I would have been. I would have bottled it all up inside, and it probably would have been just as bad, if not worse, going okay. through things in life as a man and still holding on to anger towards my father. Nah, it, 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 it would have been detrimental. Do you think it's important for a young man, and I would say any man, to deal with that anger, particularly before they get married and have their own children? I'd say yes, because we are all products of our upbringing. And that means the parts that were there and the parts that were not. That's good. Because it, it, it takes all the parts of the equation to figure out, you know, the sum of it. But if you have those missing parts and you don't... Wait a minute, you said it takes all the parts of the equation to figure out the sum of it. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, it, it really does, because if you're missing bits and pieces of who you are, because after I started to meet my father, I started to understand some of my thinking patterns, like the, the, the way I did certain things, uh, sometimes my wit, my personality, I've... I was able to put it together and not only have one side of that story, one side mm -hmm. of that equation. And then when I saw all of that, I was like, oh, okay. Because our identity um, comes yeah. from our fathers. I think, you know, this may blow some women away, <laughs> but really all we are, are an incubator, which is, you know, we have the egg and the seed, but life 
we have the egg and the womb, but life is in the, in the blood and the blood is in the seed and the seed is the sperm. So our identity, the Bible even says that our identity comes from God and it's, it's God as our father who creates us. And that's what our earthly father does. And the importance, what would you say to men who may be listening now or will log, will watch this later? You know, the importance of them staying engaged, connected, involved with their children. I, I said it earlier to Whitney, the pie concept, that some fathers are present, but they're not in, involved and they're not engaged. So the child doesn't experience the full pie. Um, but then you also have fathers who are absent, which is who your dad, your father was absent. So, mm -hmm. and one of the other things I said to Whitney was that the longer a father <laughs> goes away, the more difficult it is for him to come back because guilt starts to eat at them. Mm -hmm. So what would you say to that, to that father about if he's been away, how he should re-enter? Let, let's talk about that. How he should re-enter his child's life, one that he should, and then how should he? Uh, well, if he should, which if he should, because uh, re realistically, just because you have a father, just just because some people hold these titles, do not mean that until they get right, or until they resolve what may not even That's be a parent good, or child related within That's themselves. That's good. Everybody, just because you gave the seed, doesn't mean you should be allowed to be a part. Because if you're not well, you should stay away because you may yes. do more damage than good. That's good. Very good point. Yeah, you, but if you he is to, to come back. Yes, if he back? is to come back, he should come back honest, forthcoming, and just completely open. And have a certain amount of persistence. Yes, yeah, that deserves some thumbs up, y'all. Yes, yes. Like, re respectful persistence. Like, you can't just do it a couple of times and be like, oh, well, I'm not really uh, okay with how that turned out. Maybe we should just let this lie. You got to realize that just, especially if you're coming into the game late, if you are going to approach this young man, you have to give them that respect that they are a young man. So maybe they're not going to be okay with what you say or the approach you have. You said like, respectful you persistence. Respectful persistence. I like that. Yeah, you have to have those two things. Because if you're just persistent to a point where you think something is owed or entitled to you, just because you're the father, that can come off very brash and abrasive and turn them off to the communication entirely. You don't That's do good. That. You That's have to good. meet them at their own ground. You have to meet them at their level and when they're ready. Because if you're coming in late, but you're trying to come in, that's time that you squandered because they're the child. It's not that's on, good. It's you not on them. you. Sorry, yeah. that, that's not on them to keep that Even relationship. Even though they may you. be an adult and you're coming back, they're still the child. Yes. Yeah, they, right. they, they still are. And you, sometimes you have to let go of that mindset because they are the child, but they are a man now. They are a young man. They are however old you came into their life. That is time that you eschew that you need to make sure that you make up for. And maybe so, you have to so, so may I, so I'm hearing a couple of things. On one hand, you're the father and that's your child, even though they may be, you know, in their late teens, early 20s when you come back into their life. So they have to balance that. They have yeah. to balance that. This is my child. So because I'm the parent, I need to make inroads back. But yeah. I also have to recognize their. They're not a, they're a young man or a young lady. And so how I come back, I can't come back with a teddy bear and, you know, and, and a Nintendo, right? Yeah, no. I, I, don't, I can't come back trying to just buy them. I have to truly move into trying to develop a relationship and be respectfully persistent, meaning don't beat me over the head that I'm back and I'm your daddy. But mm -hmm. you respect the fact that my mama, my grandmother, whoever has been here, and you have it. And so you you got to get to know me. And and so let's maybe, is it developing a friendship first, Malcolm, would you say? I'd say a little bit of both. Because at that point, if they make those genuine attempts at forging a relationship with you, then that's when it's on the child to decide whether you want to be receptive to it or not. Whether you want to continue to work through, if you have worked through, move forward with the relationship, or just say, you know what, I don't want to reopen any doors. And I'm not one to tell you what to do.
have to give that effort. At that point, it becomes on the child, the you know, to, to come to forward. It All right. right, yeah, right. yeah. to and accept so, that I'm a you know, I see. You want. Well, he owes me that. I've seen all of this in, you know, my quote unquote counseling or advising or mentoring of young people. He owes me this. He owes me that. He may owe you something, but if nothing else, he owes you an apology and an explanation, right? Yes. Those but, are the two most important things. Yeah, those are important. And I think that can definitely start the healing process to develop. If you'll pick that big orange glass down. <laughs> You gotta wet the whistle. You gotta make sure that the voice is still smooth. I know mine is all raggedy from praising God yesterday. But we um so yeah, so if nothing else, you know, owing you, that young person, an apology and an explanation. Because yeah, we know you were in jail for whatever reason, but you had a pen, you had paper, right? Um right. we know you were addicted. But there's an explanation that, that goes with these things. So what, what would you say to mothers who are watching about bringing their teens uh, to, this, to this conference on April the 7th to, um, you know, hear you and Whitney's testimony and for you guys to just be real with them about your process? What, what would you say to those mothers? One, can a, can a mother raise a... Can a mother... Um, I'm going to say it like this. Can a female mm -hmm. raise a man to raise a boy to be a man? What is your, what are your thoughts on that? Yes, absolutely. It's possible. It's difficult because there's just going to be some bonding moments, some connections that won't necessarily. Let me, let me, let me ask it this way, because I think sometimes we confuse because I don't believe I, I, I believe a mother can impart into her son good citizenship, being responsible, being of good character, but truly what it means to be a man and what that looks like. Because men learn by example. W women True. learn, our, 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 audible, our learning, our first learning is audible. Men's first learning is visual. So what they see, they do. And your mom, there are things your mom as a man, and I'm not talking about going to the bathroom. I'm just really like in yeah. character as a man. The way and you so, kill yourself, what you do, how so, you do it. Go say it again. I'm sorry. I'm just saying, like your uh, your character, what you do, how you do it, just how you go about living life, even. Yeah, and that's why God gives gives us both parents, the father and the mother, and the woman and the male, because a lot of times that um, the character, the nurturing of that, you know. This is how you treat people often comes from a mom. But if somebody don't treat you right, this comes from a dad. <laughs> you know, True. How you handle that. So um, what would you say to mothers who are watching, you know, how to um, just be, well, considering even your mom or other mothers that you know, you know, how can they, help their sons in the absence of their father to truly um, just what, what things do, do they, should they put in his life to help him to be the man that God created him to be? And then encouraging them to get to the conference, share that as well. So, and the things that help, the things that you should impart would be a strong sense of duty, I'd say. Mm, a, strong okay. sense of duty, um, a sense of respect for others as a whole. Yeah. Um, another thing that you should definitely impart would be work ethic. It, work ethic, and just what one thing that something seems to be a misconception. It, it, it doesn't matter who you are. Do not let anyone disrespect you. And that comes as a male and a female. And most people would say that you would learn that more from having a father figure. But if you have a moniker of self-respect and you love yourself and you appreciate who you are as a person and you know your, your value, you won't let anyone disrespect you. And that's something else that needs to be taught too because some, some, some would say that, you know, women are too soft, too, too meek. You know, they're too easy on their sons. 
yes, they're going to have a soft spot because that's a mother and her son. That's a mother and her child. But you, you will also teach that child to defend itself and to be able to stand up for him or herself. And, that, and see, that's interesting that you say that because how we do that as women is different than men. So I absolutely hear what you're saying. You know, don't let anyone disrespect you. Stand up for yourself. You know, speak. Because when a man speaks and defends himself, society wants to say he's an angry black male. Exactly. Right? And yeah. so it's, it's, it's even how a, a man, um, it's even how a man deals with conflict. And so mm -hmm. this is why I think mentoring is so important. It with, is with young black men, young boys in general, but specifically this is because who we're talking to just mentoring so that they see how you handle conflict, how you resolve conflict, how you deal with things. Uh, someone said our responsibility as a mom is to aid our sons in becoming good men, good persons, which in return will help them to develop and become the kind of man he wants to be. And I would say that God has put him to here to be because you are created to be prophet, priest, and priest, you know, to be able to speak God's word, to be able to rule and reign and to be able to pray and set spiritual order in your home. So that is what the conference is all about. So with, what encouragement would you give to mothers, aunties, grandmothers who may watch to get their sons there? What are you going to tell their sons? to say you need so that they'll want to get them there as much as i you know just what one thing I need that understanding from a male you, you need someone who gets it someone that can understand it at that at that base level without needing that extra bit of i, I, I don't, I don't want to say explanation but extra bit of understanding because there's just a certain level of communication that's just gotten through naturally when you're talking to someone else. Obviously. Yeah, male to male, male yeah, to male. Absolutely, absolutely. Something male about male. when all all y'all, to, to step strong is in the same room, right? Without, yeah. without the you, you don't have to be so guarded. Right, because in, in one, yeah, you don't have anything to prove anything to. There are no women in your space, in the yeah. worship center, in the uh, sanctuary, or in the, breakouts it's we're we're here to just help move the vision forward on that day and so again on april the 7th uh, malcolm ernest taylor yes. and whitney oliver the second will be doing a workshop for your teens for your teens your sons your nephews your grandsons thank you they're giving you hearts give give malcolm hearts give him hearts thank you very much appreciate it <laughs> what he shared in his transparency which is not always easy so i appreciate you tank and so Welcome. on april the 7th at uh west side missionary baptist church off of la paz trail get your teen sons there you can drop them off doors will mm -hmm. open at 7 30 continental breakfast at eight you know how much your sons eat so you might want to feed them a little bit because they just going to have continental breakfast, okay? And then we will have worship. We will have our opening speaker, Dr. David Hampton, pastor of Light of the World uh, Christian Church. And then we will go into breakouts. After the breakouts, we will have lunch where Percy Bland will be doing a um, spoken word. After lunch, we will have more workshops. And then we will go, you guys will go back into worship and you will hear from Dr. Marvin L. Sapp with I know a powerful word to just propel the men and the teens that will be present to their next level as men, as fathers, as husbands. And then after that, we will move directly into the reconciliation restoration ceremony where women will be allowed to come at two o'clock. And let me tell you what that is. At when you women when the women come, you will be given a sheet of paper. You'll be taken into a separate room. We only can take fifty women. You'll be taken into a separate room. We'll pray with you, minister to you, talk about your male M A L E hurt, and you will get a sheet of paper. You'll put your name on it, and, and you'll check the box. My male hurt was I was left with three kids. Um, I you know was divorced. My my son never knew. My children never knew their father. Um, I have a young lady who was sex trafficked by her uncle. 
Um, I was molested. I was raped. I was whatever it was. I was abused, whatever it was, domestic violence, whatever. And you will be brought into the sanctuary and you will be placed in front of one of the gentlemen who has agreed. I know it does bring you to tears. You'll be placed in front of the gentleman, one of the gentlemen who have, who's agreed to be a part of this and they will take your sheet of paper and they will simply say, Tuesday, I'm sorry that happened to you. I stand proxy for the man who did it and I ask that you forgive me. And they will pray over you and we will escort you out of the room. And then the next woman will be brought in uh, for that session. So my goal is for there to be holistic healing through this conference. And I keep saying, you don't have to go all the way to Dallas to manpower. There is something right here in this city. So men's ministries, fraternities, young men's groups, teen ministries, uh, men's mentoring organizations, teenage organizations, get your men there and your teens there. This is going to be a powerful time for you. And it is set aside just for you. One of the things God told me when I was struggling with, as a woman, to do this conference, one of the things the Lord said to me, comforted me in, was that I gave a man named T.D. Jakes a vision years ago to start something called Woman Thou Art Loose on the backside of West Virginia's mountains. No one knew who he was, but that conference has become a movement and a revolution for women. And he comforted me that I can give vision to whomever I choose. And I chose to give you this. So the forum has been in existence for about 10 years, but uh, this is our first conference. So get your men there, encourage them to come, pray that they come churches, your men's ministry. Let this conference be a supplement to what you're already doing for your men and your teen boys. Let's all get together and just change our community and, and change what we're seeing uh, in our communities, in our neighborhoods, and across this country. It's open to anyone across the country to come, so I'll put the link here. Thank you, Tank. Anything else you want to share? Did he? Okay, he logged off. Okay, so thank you all so much. Thank you. I didn't get a chance to acknowledge everyone who was coming on. Keith, Anita, Andrew, um, is one of Malcolm's friends, Mother Or. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Latrice, India. Uh, thank you, Connie. Thank you, Derek Jones. You're such a wonderful supporter. Hey, Jennifer. Uh, thank you so much, um, Augustine, Brother Joel. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. Thank you, Tasha. Thank you, Sister Price. Thank you, Sister Smith. Thank you, Dina. Thank you, Paulette, Vanessa. Hey, Sands. Hey, Tyler, and everyone who was on when Whitney was here. So please register. Men, women, you use the same link to register. Let's just start to impact uh, and heal. Heal our families, heal our relationships, our marriages, heal. Um, and I always say, they say, people say this is an epidemic, but epidemics have an ending, right? This has been something that has plagued our community, and we are going to get it together and start this journey of healing to be made whole. The question is asked, will thou be made whole? And I pray that on April 7th, men blow our minds and show up that we're ready to be made whole, to walk as king, priest, and prophet. Thank you so much for joining us for this hour, and I will see those who join me at 5 a.m. for Fourth Watch Power Prayer Teaching tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. Thank you so much. I love you with the love of the Lord. See you on April the 7th.